Hey guys, David here. Um, I just acquired this uh, early generation uh, Tremec uh, 3550 TKO transmission from a gentleman uh, in South Georgia. Um, got a pretty good deal on it. Uh, he was having problems with it, so he ended up buying uh, a brand new TKO 600 uh, to replace this one. He said this one was having problems um, downshifting. Um, so he had this in a 1956 Ford, uh, F100 truck or F150, not too sure exactly the model, uh, name for those years are, um, I got a buddy who's big into these trucks. He would know better than I do, but, um, you'll notice it has a shift relocation kit on it. Um, that's how it came. I started, a. You know, when I went down there to get this thing, obviously I took off the inspection plates just to take a general look of, uh, you know, the condition of the gears and whatnot. Um, but, uh, you know, everything looked fine, but what I'm going to do here is I'm going to just completely rebuild this thing. I'm going to tear it all down, see what it needs, um, and then reconfigure it for the Mustang application, which obviously requires the rear shifter and not the center shifter. And I'll, and I'll probably put this shifter right here, the relocated one for sale. So if, you know, if anybody's interested, let me know, uh, you know, just shoot me an email powered by Ford three zero, uh, three zero six at yahoo.com. But, um, so we're going to tear this thing down, uh, and see what we, need or see what it needs i can tell that somebody's been in here before and how i can tell is it does not have the original sealant that tremec used from the factory if you look right here there's some gray silicone in between the tail housing and the main case tremec used a uh anaerobic sealant which is uh you know it's a lot better uh it dries in the absence of air um but uh, it's also for finely machined surfaces. So obviously somebody's been in here before. Um, we're just going to have to see what we find in here. Um, you'll notice over here I did buy a brand new set of blocker rings. We're just going to put new synchronizers in it regardless. Got some extra hardware. I'm going to show you what this is for. This is a shift lug. Uh, that was originally removed for the mid-shift conversion. So I needed to source that. The uh, owner didn't have it. Got some uh, shift fork pads, shim kit, got some seals, and also a new bearing retainer. As you'll see, the one on the transmission is galled right there if you can see at the end there's a big gouge in the bottom of it and i just noticed that uh last week i've had this transmission for maybe two weeks just haven't really got around to it but so anyway that's what i know i need for uh you know for now but hopefully that's all it needs um but this one's going to be rebuilt um we're going to go through this thing and it'll be a spare uh, you know, for either Ruby or Gunner, uh, for the price I got this thing for, you know, I couldn't, I just couldn't turn it down. Um, so, but yeah, well, let's get started. All right, guys, so we're just going to remove the, uh, two bolts that I, uh, you know, left in here. So what you'll see in here are some lugs. Um, these have some roll pins that you're going to want to knock out. So uh, the way this works is you have a rail here, you know, from your rear shifter. And you can tell that it moves pretty freely. But that is because there's a shift lug that's missing. Um, 
but we're gonna and that's actually the shift lug that I showed you earlier we're gonna have to reinstall that so um, mark these the way they are now knock out the roll pins and then that way this whole tail shaft can come off all right guys so here we have the rear seal of these transmissions I've already worked this loose but um, this is obviously going to get replaced. I found out the easiest way to replace these seals or actually to remove it. Now again, I've already worked it loose out of its housing, but it's kind of a little different than the metal shell seals. But if you take a flat blade screwdriver, be very careful. Wedge the tip just behind the rubber. Do not score the bore and pry against the shaft, they'll come out just like that. So what we're gonna do now is break these bolts loose right here and they go around the perimeter of the uh, tail shaft housing. Uh, once they're all broken loose, you can tap this case away from the main case. All right guys, well now that all the bolts are out, I'm gonna tap on this case and you just wanna use like a rubber dead blow. You wanna tap right here. And um, you might have to grab onto the main case with your other hand, but you should start to see this thing, uh, the parting line start to break open when you tap on this housing. Just like that guys. And there's just a little bit of oil that's coming out. I mean, that's always gonna happen, but uh, that's normal. There's actually some O-rings right in here. That I can tell when they put them back together they uh, got smashed. Um, but we'll take a look at those in a minute. Alright guys, yeah, so finally got the case off, or the tail housing off. Um, whoever rebuilt this transmission, uh, they really need, you know, just need to put their tools back up. Um, what you're going to notice here this just fell out okay this is a shift rail bushing and these are supposed to stay in the top cover well it came right out and as you can see the o-rings are completely gone some are they're actually damaged they're not gone but they're damaged um, a lot of the silicone that this person used it, it, it just it squished in there and as he was reinstalling the case it grabbed a hold of the o-rings and they kind of rolled over each other uh, it's not the best design that's one of the few uh weaknesses of these tremex um is are these pieces right here but it's not the end of the world but you just have to know what you're doing when you put these back together also look at all that trash in this bearing race here's the dowels that we knocked out but there's just a lot of trash in here so good thing we're tearing this down and you know we're just gonna make this thing like brand new again one thing to notice about these uh, rear counter shaft bearing races in the tail housing there are shims at least one if not more behind that race you need to make sure you keep those shims when you pull the race out and you're gonna use that as a starting point when you put it back together. There's the race. And there's the shim, two. So we're gonna use these to start out when we reassemble to get our preload. We may have to adjust it, but that's normal. All right guys, next we're gonna take this cover off. There's a few bolts around here there's some locating dowels. I'm going to break all these bolts loose. We're going to pry up 
and it'll expose the um, more internals of the case. These top covers have some um, prying points. One's here, one's here, one is right here, and one is right here. Um, do not use a flat blade screwdriver to wedge in between the top cover and the case. This is a finely machined edge on both sides, and you want to maintain the integrity of that seal, that mounting surface. So what you want to do is take a pry bar and wedge it under this ear on this side and rest it on top of the ear here. Now be very careful and just pry up on it and that's going to break it loose. Same thing over here under the ear under the top case here, top cover here, and then on the main case here, and it'll pry up just like that. And it should just pull right up. Next, we're going to remove the Throw out bearing retainer, input shaft, bearing, retainer. Uh, it's kind of the same thing. Your throw out bearing rides on here, and your input shaft bearing race is inside. And there's some shims just like uh, what came out of the tail housing. So we're going to go ahead and remove this. So because of all the silicone this person used, the bearing race actually stayed inside the housing, but we're going to remove that. I don't see any shims behind here, but uh, when we go to mock everything up, we'll have to see what it needs. Here's the damage. Where is it? I don't know if you guys can see that. That's why I needed a new uh, bearing retainer. All right guys, well I got the input shaft out, just pulled out on it. When you pull them out, there's gonna be some needle bearings that ride in this pocket of this input shaft. Tremex calling for 17 of these. Uh, I only counted 16, some fell in the case. I'm hoping the other one is in the bottom of the case. If not, then guess what? I'll have to go buy one. And that means that whoever put this together had this thing running with uh, only 16 of the needle bearings. So, but yep, so you'll run into that. These bearings look really uh, good. So these bearings are pretty heavy duty. You, do, you don't really ever have to replace them. But uh, so yeah, let's continue. One thing over here is when you pull this input shaft out, the input shaft is technically fourth gear. You're gonna have a cone and your blocker ring, your, your bronze blocker ring. There's also a Torrington bearing behind there um, with two mating surfaces. It's a cage needle bearing. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this out and show you what I'm talking about. So I've already pulled this out. When it's in here, you're gonna wanna push down on the tail shaft and you'll see the whole assembly come up and it'll allow you to remove this fourth gear cone and blocker ring. But as you can see here, you have a race. A Torrington needle bearing.
and then the other race and it's an assembly I'm gonna keep all this stuff together we're gonna clean it up and uh, reuse them but that's how it goes together so here we are at the fifth gear assembly Let's start taking this off there's a rear counter bearing right here and it just slides off and we're gonna rest this over here where my cup is now one thing I don't know how you guys work at home I like to have everything neatly organized so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay everything out the way it comes out of this transmission from the forward most to the rear most so I'm gonna have my gears laid out all the way towards the end here so it just helps me go back with everything um, so I just wanted to point that out, but we're going to knock this roll pin out of this fifth fork. And I'm going to try and take this whole assembly off as one. The gear, the cone, the synchro, everything. And there's going to be needle bearings. There's going to be two rows of needle bearings in here. It's okay if they fall out. There's a ton of them. I'll count them later. But make sure you keep track of them. Alright guys, so as you can see, I knocked the roll pin out. And you can see that uh, it's no longer aligned. What you want to do here is grab a hold of the whole fifth gear assembly. I don't know if you can see where my hand is, but there's a gap because I've already started pulling it out. You want to grab that whole gear, and at the same time, you want to pull this fork away from this shaft. And this whole assembly, which is going to include the fork, the cone, synchronizer, the gear, all that stuff is going to come out all at once. Um, there's going to be a race on the counter shaft. You, you're going to want to keep that there just for now. But I'm going to put the camera down and uh, I'm going to pull this whole assembly off. Well, here's the whole fifth gear assembly removed as one unit. And... Um, I will go ahead and take this thing fully apart just because, as y'all can see, um, whoever rebuilt this transmission is a little questionable on their uh, craftsmanship skills. But you can see here all these needle bearings in here. Once I pull this cone out, these things are going to go everywhere. On the later generation Tremex, uh, both the 3550 and the TKO, you have two rows of 44 needles a piece. So you're going to need 88 needles total. When these come out, I'm going to put them in this Tupperware and uh, go from there. Just like that, guys. Cones out. One thing to notice is there's a spacer that separates the two rows of needle bearings. You want to make sure you keep that. I'm just going to leave it on here so when I go put it back together, of course, I'm going to clean it, but you know. I'm gonna clean everything up, but I'm gonna keep it on here so I can remember there that it stays there. But here's all my needle bearings. And there's the part number in case you need spares. Down here at the counter shaft, there's a race that slides off, and there's gonna be an anti rotation ball. We're gonna get it right there. This race that's sliding off is what keeps the needle bearings in fifth gear intact and not going into the counter shaft bearing that you see behind it. So make sure you don't lose this anti-rotation ball. There's a groove in that race. That's how it goes on. Narrow part of the race goes towards the front. That'll go towards the front. Now what you're going to want to do here, guys, is you're going to want to take this whole assembly out, but it comes off all its, you know, as one unit. But you're going to want to grab it from the front, push down on the back, and this this unit's very heavy, so be very careful. But I'm going to attempt to pull this out as one one unit, and then once it's on the table, we're going to slide everything off one by one. So let's see how this comes out. Got the rear bearing race. 
We're gonna take that off right here. like that like I said this thing's pretty heavy so try and maneuver it and out she comes taking a closer look at this main shaft here's all your gears your sliders synchronizers everything rear bearing speedometer gear so as we were saying before um, about the quality of the person who rebuilt this transmission, now I haven't pulled everything out of the case just yet. We still have all this to take out. There's some oil inside there. Um, you know, it's the counter shaft and reverse idler and whatnot. But um, I don't know if you noticed, but I counted 16 input shaft needle bearings and they roll along this edge right here. Let's take a look at this edge, this machine surface. It's worn away, it's pitted, it's gone, it's flared. So guess what that means? We need a new main shaft because this is machined as one shaft going through here. Now once we slide everything off, you'll see, but this snout is completely gone. It's pitted. My guess is, is if I can't find that spare needle bearing in the bottom of this case, this is what happens when you don't have enough parts, enough of your bearings inside here. Your clearances are not maintained, and it'll just start chewing itself apart, and that's what started happening here. So I'm going to have to order a main shaft for this. Um, it's going to be the same main shaft that comes in the TKO 500s and I, you know and this has the 68 overdrive ratio fifth gear is machined onto the main shaft so I need to make sure that uh, we get the same main shaft so yeah so before we even start sliding all this off we're already seeing what we need so fun fun all right guys well here we are here's what's left over Got the counter shaft. Sorry about the bad lighting, so I'm just using my uh, my LED light. Counter shaft, reverse idler, and some of the reverse fifth um, linkage right here. But the first thing you want to do is there's a roll pin on that shaft. You want to knock that out, pull the silver shaft out, and there's going to be there's actually going to be a nub on here. You want to rotate it, um, and it should come out. Uh, reverse shaft pulled out, and the nub. Just keep that together. You're going to need that later. Next to come out is the reverse idler. There's a shaft right here. It's going to pull out towards the rear, towards the camera. And you're going to push on it from here. Push that center axle out. There's a roll pin. Anti-rotation pin. It comes with it. When you push that axle out, you're going to hear all the needles fall and you're going to pull this whole assembly out, these two gears and slider as one unit. All your needles are going to fall. That's okay. They're going to be in the case. Take you a magnet once it's out and get all your needles out. All right, guys. So what I did was I just laid everything out. All the needles came out. Slider, idler in reverse and whatnot, the shafts. Here's all the needle bearings. There's two separate lengths of needle bearings. The longer ones go in the forward most gear and it's got some spacers and whatnot and the rear most gear had two rows of the shorter needle bearings with spacers so we'll go through and putting all these back together when the time comes uh, I know it looks dawning right now but uh, it's not as bad as it seems there's also some end shims that came out I think I'm gonna get a new one of these it got chewed up um so yeah let's see what we're left with in the case sorry about the lighting again but uh just the counter shaft it'll just pull out there's a bearing here the way it comes out the way i see it now 
is all of the etchings of the part number are facing outwards, which is pretty industry standard for machinery. But also you can tell uh, the way the outer shell has markings on it or, you know, some, some wear marks so you know how it goes. It'll just slide off like so. And then the main shaft will just come out. Now what you're going to want to do is pull it back, lift up on the front, and out it'll come. All right, so here we are at the main shaft. We're going to start disassembling this shaft. This slider will slide right off, like so. And again, I'm just going to line everything up. If it faces forward, I'm going to face it upwards. Blocker ring. This is going to be third gear. It's going to slide off. And there's a cage needle bearing under there. I'm going to lay that right there. Okay, there's going to be a snap ring that holds this cage needle bearing on. That has to come off. Then, this, then the cage needle bearing will slide off and you can continue. All right, so what I did was I took the snap ring off, slid the cage roller bearing off for third gear, and I just placed it inside there for now so that I know where it goes. There's an outer ring with two half moons. There's probably gonna be a ball bearing that keeps these half moons in place. Um, so those come out next. If I just take a magnet. So this outer ring again holds those two half moons together. Take the trusty old magnet. Like that. I don't know if you can see, but there's the anti-rotation ball. We'll go ahead and grab that. Oh, just comes off in one piece, or, you know, together. Keep, keep all this stuff together, and you can keep going. So here we are. This is second gear. This should slide off, like so. Try to be very careful with it. Cage roller bearing. These synchronizers, obviously, I'm going to replace with new ones. These really don't look that bad. These might have been replaced when uh, this transmission was uh, put together by the last person horribly. But we're going to put new ones in. Alright. Back to some more snap rings and hubs. Snap rings off. Slider should pull right off. Just like that. And then this gear will slide right off too. And there's a cage roller bearing up under here. All right, guys. So there was another snap ring in this groove right here. Slid first gear off. And there was the uh, cage roller bearing. Slid right back in there. There's another half moon with an outer shell that comes off. And then once that's off, I'm going to have to take this bearing off. 
and we're going to transfer this to the new main shaft once we get it. All right, guys. So here's another uh, closer look at this um, main shaft pilot. You can see how pitted up it is. Yeah, there's no fixing this. I mean, there is, but it's not worth it. I'm just going to have to, uh, like I said, just go buy a new one. But this is what we're left with. So now we just have to clean everything up, put it back together. Case, or, you know, tail housing, main case. So now it's just clean up, get a couple parts, and uh, get some O-rings, and uh, put it all back together. All right, guys, I want to go over uh, the O-rings that go in the top cover for the shift rail. Um, they're kind of hard to find uh, through Tremec. Um, I think they're, you know, they might even be discontinued. Um, but I'm going to let you guys in on a little secret. If you go to the parts store and get any o-rings i just happen to have these laying around they're actually for ac systems but they're actually made better than a normal uh phyton o-ring the size you want is 11 sixteenths by 1 sixteenths i'm gonna show it to you right here this size right here 11 sixteenths by 1 sixteenths this is actually a i think i got this maybe at harbor freight or the part store but those are the size you know the size that you need so these just slide on of course I pulled them out and I pulled the o-rings off of course they were you know pretty bad pretty flat spotted so these will just slide on here and you and put some grease on these I just use some red and tacky bearing grease from Lucas just put enough on here to, um, you know, just barely coat the the uh, O-ring, and then I like to just spin it in. I can't hold the camera and do it at the same time, but if you grab the case and spin this collar into the top cover, you'll you'll actually be very successful in not cutting the O-ring. Um, but once again, to redo these O-rings, you'll need nine of them. And again, they're a 11 sixteenths by 1 sixteenths. You'll need nine of them. So just go to your parts store or wherever you go for O-rings and get that size. And you can get the regular Viton. I just had these laying around, so that's what I'm going to use. All right, so back to the input shaft issue. Um, remember, as I said earlier, uh, I only counted 16 input shafts, needle bearings. Well, I did find the 17th one. Uh, it was laying in the bottom of the case, as I probably suspected. But it seems like the issue was um, either a piece of trash um, got inside the pocket and rode inside the needle bearings, destroying the um, snout of the main shaft. Or, you know, another issue with these transmissions, and it's not really the transmission's fault, is if these things run low on oil in other words if the person if the owner doesn't put enough oil in it and you go drag racing these transmissions these and the t5s are notorious when you're stomping on the gas uh banging the gears uh, you know the drag strip all your fluid rushes towards the rear so the front doesn't really get the lubrication that it should but again that's only if uh they're not filled to the normal level so that's what I'm assuming happened here. Um, I went ahead and took the input shaft, uh, pressed off the bearing. The bearings look good, so we're going to reuse them. Um, these bearings for these Tremex, there are kits out there that give you everything. They're, they're pretty expensive, guys. The bearings for these things are kind of pricey. But you can piece them out if you need just one or two. Um, the part number is for the front input shaft is a 355. It's a Timken 355. Industry standard states that you can go with any brand you want, but usually the Timkins, the SKFs, the NTNs, those are the best bearings out there. Made in USA, um, those are what you want to use. So I'm going to clean this bearing up and 
I've had a spare input shaft for years now. Um, it was laying in my uh, toolbox drawer. It's exactly what I need. We're going to put this bearing on the new shaft. I'm going to show you why. When the bearings destroyed the snout, they also destroyed the inner race in here. Um, it's hard to tell from this angle, but this race is actually pitted. It's not horrible, but I don't want to use it. Um, so this probably is just going to end up being a lineup tool or scrap. So this is what happens, guys. You want to make sure that you do these things right. If you're going to rebuild them, take your time. Make sure everything's done properly. Clean your cases out. I'm going to show you this over here. I'm still waiting for some parts to come in, but you want to clean everything hospital grade. I mean, I'm talking, you don't want any metal shavings or any kind of silicone or anything, and this is going to help your rebuild. So just take your time, do it right. Your machine surfaces, you want to take a razor blade and just scrape off whatever silicone or whatever um, sealant that was on there before. Um, and then you can take an, uh, you know, a green scotch bright pad that you get at the uh, store and just kind of lightly scuff the machine surfaces. Um, be careful not to gouge the surfaces if you are going to use a razor blade. Use them as parallel to the surface as you can. But you want to get these things super clean. Another thing also is back to the input shaft needle bearings. These are the part number right here. They've changed the part number over the years. That's the that's the current part number. I get SKF. You can get these at Napa. If they don't have them in stock, they can order them. Made in USA. That's the good stuff. So that's what we're going to use. I'm going to go ahead and press. You know, I'm going to clean this bearing up right here. And we're going to press it on our new input shaft. All right, well, here we are at the press, cleaned everything up, and um, I'm about to press this bearing on. But um, normally these presses are pretty standard as far as um, what you need. You just have to stack up your height to see what you need. Um, over the years, I've acquired some old bearings, some of the bad bearings from differentials, transmissions, front hubs, you name it. You just cut them up and you use the inner races. Those are always really good. Um, stacking pieces and just some kind of generic pipe nothing too uh too difficult here or you can take this stuff to a shop you know if you need a bearing removed or pressed i don't know they'll probably charge 10 15 bucks to do it so but anyway i'm gonna go ahead and press this bearing on and uh we'll be good to go All right guys, it's started. So what you wanna do when you press on a bearing, clean the surfaces up and um, put a light film of oil on both races, the inner race of the bearing and the race of where it's gonna sit on and it'll just help everything uh, slide on easier. Just like that. Good to go. Alright guys, we're back. We're going to reinstall the uh, front bearing race cup. I had to get a new one of these. Um, here's the part number. In case you guys need it. Um, the one that came out of this transmission was pretty galled up. Um, so obviously I had to get a new one. They have an O-ring seal. Um, and I also applied some aviation forma gasket. You can get this stuff at Napa and some other, um, stores, but it comes out really thick. Um, I applied some on the inner race where this cup is going to seal. 
this flange is going to seal against that surface and the o-ring is going to form a secondary seal so we're just going to tap this in and it'll be good to go and one thing you want to do is you want to lube the bore with any kind of motor oil in the transmission in the case you want to lube it up and then you're just going to want to tap it in straight And you're going to want to make sure you go in evenly. We got it started. Just go in a circular pattern. until you're fully seated. And there you have it. All right guys, we're gonna put the counter shaft in. I've already put the cup from the front bearing inside the race that we just tapped in. And you're gonna to wanna to angle the shaft just like so. And it's gonna go in the case. Be very careful because it is very heavy. Just like so. And then you're going to want to guide it forward. Just like that. Then we're going to rotate the case on its front end. Spins pretty good. We're gonna install this rear bearing. On this transmission, the lettering was facing outwards and you can see the markings on the shell where it went into the bore. And it just slides on like so. All right, guys, we're going to install the uh, reverse idler assembly. I had to get new um, reverse idler thrust washers uh, from Tremec because obviously the other ones got destroyed heavily in probably the previous assembly process. But we're going to go ahead and install these first. I'm actually going to install the lower one first and let it rest in its bore right there. And it can move around a little bit which is fine, but once we drive the shaft in, it'll line up. This is your reverse idler assembly. There's needle bearings that go inside the bores. Your forward most one has long needle bearings, spacer, long spacer, and this thrust washer. And it's going to mate up with this assembly right here that has two rows of needle bearings with a spacer in between the two rows and then an outward spacer. And they're gonna to mate together just like this. And we're gonna install this in the vertical position in, in the bore, and then we're gonna drive the shaft in. All right guys, so we've installed our reverse idler assembly. Um, both gears, you wanna install them at the same time. They're gonna rest on one washer that's in here that you just installed. And then once the assembly is installed together, you can uh, install your top washer uh, once all that's in line, you're going to take your axle and slide it in from the back the way you pulled it out when you uh, removed everything during disassembly. All right, guys, so what we're going to do is we're going to check the preload of the bearings, the front countershaft bearing against the rear countershaft bearing. So before you assemble everything, you know, main shaft and whatnot, you want to mock everything up the way uh, you're going to have it as far as the bearings go. So... You're going to want to have your fifth gear race, fifth gear cone, and then you're going to have your output counter shaft bearing installed just like so. Here's the tail housing. I've already installed the two shims that came 
with the tail housing. We're going to use those first. These shims are what's going to adjust the preload on the whole shaft between both bearings. So because there's grease uh, in here, it's going to hold the shims uh, in place while I rest the um, tail housing on the main housing. So I have everything together mocked up the way we uh, spoke about earlier. Um, everything spins perfectly. There's just a little bit of drag on the bearings. It's probably about one or two thousandths preload, but that's exactly how you want it. Everything spins nice and smoothly. We're going to take this tail housing back apart, take off the fifth cone assembly, and keep on going. All right, guys, so I have everything for uh, the reverse assembly somewhat installed. You install the fork, slide the shaft through. This pin is notched for the roll pin. So I took a Sharpie, marked which way it needs to go, and it will stay in that position. And then you want to just bring it in like so, and then tap your roll pin in. All right, guys, so upon disassembly of this transmission, now remember the previous owner said uh, he had an issue downshifting. This right here is your 3-4 slider. These engagement teeth, whichever ones are actually left, are to engage on the synchronizer on a brass ring and then engage on third gear. This happens to be third gear right here. If you can tell, these engagement teeth are supposed to have a finely machined triangulated point. These are chipped, worn, rounded off. Some aren't even there. So this is what caused the shifting problem. When that uh, saying is said, when you can't find them, grind them, this is what you're hearing right here. So these engagement teeth, some of the engagement teeth on the actual gears themselves are just completely rounded off, chipped. Some aren't even there. So I had to purchase a second gear, a third gear, 3-4 slider, a 1-2 slider, and a couple of other pieces because these are just beyond, beyond repair, unfortunately. So this is what happens when they run low on oil or um, someone abuses the transmission. They don't have their clutch uh, properly aligned. If it's not disengaging fully, you're going to have this problem. That's when you're going to have the, uh, the grinding issue. And these teeth, along with these teeth, just round each other off when the clutch is not completely disengaging. So we're going to go ahead and uh, reassemble the main shaft, and it's going to be com the exact inverse of disassembly from earlier. But I just wanted to show you that. All right, guys. Well, I got all the, <clears throat> you know, the gear stacked on the main shaft and installed. As I said earlier... My 1-2 slider is new, second gear is new, third gear is new, and the 3-4 slider is new. All of those had to be replaced because the engagement teeth were just rounded off. So um, I got it all installed, as you can see, and we're about to put fourth gear, which is the input shaft. The needle bearings um, are packed in here. You stack them in there with grease. Your last needle bearing, you're going to slide in from the outside in and... Uh, we're going to go ahead and install this and start buttoning things up. All right, guys, got the uh, fifth gear assembly fully packed with all the needles. Two rows. We're going to go ahead and install the fifth gear cone, synchronizer, and fork all as one. We're going to put it together and slide it on the output shaft or the counter shaft. One thing I want to mention guys is I went ahead and got all new shift fork pads. So as you can see I installed it. Installed both of them on the uh, fifth gear fork and as you'll see in a few minutes I uh, installed them on the one two 
and three four forks as well so we're going to go ahead and install this unit all as one and uh, slide it on the shaft one thing to remember is the anti-rotation ball and the race with a step facing forward make sure that goes on first and then you can slide everything on all right guys as you can see I slid on the whole fifth gear assembly, fork, synchronizer, slider, and everything. And all I have to do is finish tapping on the fifth gear roll pin. All right, guys, before we put this top cover on, I want to go over uh, sealants with you. This is anaerobic gasket maker sealant. This dries in the absence of air. This is what Tremec uses from the factory to seal their transmissions. It's a little more expensive. Um, it seals better. It's for a finely machined surface. Um, silicone, do not use silicone. Um, I've seen so many times where the silicone actually does not dry completely and it stays wet. Plus any leftover silicone uh, that builds up from your bolts from through holes will end up in the gearbox once it falls and breaks loose. So you want to use this anaerobic sealant. Comes out red again. This is what Tremec uses from the factory. So um, definitely use this. We're about to put this on the uh, top of the gearbox, the main case, and we're going to go ahead and uh, install the top cover. All right, we have our anaerobic sealant on. We're about to drop the top cover on. Make sure everything's in neutral. Your sliders are in the neutral position, um, and everything should go on pretty smoothly. Now, because this transmission had the uh, shifter relocation kit installed, this was the missing uh, shift lug finger that I had to source to install on the shaft. So I'm going to have to install this on the shaft right here, punch the roll pin in, make sure it faces up. Most of you guys probably won't need to do this, though, because you have the Mustang style uh, shift point. So just wanted to note that. All right, guys, got the top cover on and about to install the tail shaft housing. Went ahead and put some more of the anaerobic sealant around all the bolt holes and positioned it to where I can slide it on. When you put the uh, tail shaft housing on, you have to maneuver a few things. Make sure you grease the O rings and make sure not to pinch them as the cover slides on. Bearings on, the cups in the housing and it should go on pretty smoothly see how it does all right guys well the tail housing's on everything slid on rather well as you can see here shift lugs are in place now these as you slide the tail housing on you want to make sure you install these on the rails as the tail housing slides on um i just have to knock the roll pins in and this is the proper setup for a Fox body Mustang or any kind of Mustang application. That shift finger is installed. Uh, this center lug is facing downwards instead of upwards. So it actually grabs the shift selector finger for three, four for the three, four rail. So anyways, but yeah, guys, Everything's coming together really nicely on this transmission. All right, guys, so now we're going to focus on the um, bearing retainer. So this bearing retainer has an input shaft seal, and then it also holds the front bearing race. Okay, these things have shims. We're going to reuse the original shim, which is right here, that came off of the old bearing retainer. We're going to use that as a starting point. And what we're going to do is we're going to install this loosely. We're not going to seal it up, and we're going to make sure that we have enough proper uh, preload on the main shaft. So that's what we're going to do now. We're going to install that. Install the cup. And then as this goes on, uh, we'll tighten all four bolts, and we'll see how she feels. All right, guys. Well, I took the final adjustment or the measurement. Um, the stock shim was a 15,000th shim. 
that goes behind this race and that was perfect so this transmission ended up using the exact same shims uh, that's what we would expect but you always want to double check this stuff so this uh, input uh, bearing retainer is ready to go on for the last time got the anaerobic sealant and we'll go ahead and run it down and you don't have to run these on gorilla tight guys just uh, good and snug I think the torque spec might be 18 to 22 foot pounds I want to say but somewhere in there uh, you don't have to uh, go crazy on these threads so let's go ahead and put it on all right guys well here it is everything's done um, brand new input shaft obviously use the anaerobic sealant all throughout top cover to main case uh, input shaft bearing retainer to case brand new input shaft um, you know everything's been totally gone through all brand new blocker rings um, so yeah but this is what it takes to rebuild one of these things guys uh, this one was pretty pretty worn out uh, you know I must say usually you don't see bad input shafts or bad main shafts or anything like that but this one was definitely abused so uh just always make sure you, you uh have the proper level of fluid in there obviously it takes the uh you know the gm or you know the pennzoil synchro mesh fluid um got a hearse shifter um brand new seal so yeah just uh these things will take care of you if you take care of them I, you know, I for one happen to like these transmissions. Um, they hold up to a lot of abuse as far as the street car is concerned. I mean, you can break anything. I know guys out there, and I'm sure you guys do too, that'll break a wrecking ball with a rubber dead blow. I mean, that's just going to happen. But as long as you take care of it, it'll take care of you. So thanks for watching. Um, trying to think of anything else. You know, the top covers are obviously sealed with, you know, just a regular. Um, you know, just a black permatex. That's how Tremec does it from the factory. So that's the way I did it. Um, you'll see a lot of these guys use all kind of different sealants, but uh, I always try to use what the factory um, uses. You know, they pay you know they pay these uh, engineers a lot of money to uh, you know to design the best of the best. Um, so that's just what I go with. Anyways, guys, well there you have it. Fully rebuilt. Old school TKO. Take it easy.